Okay, we're looking at question number two now. And what we've got here is we've got some information, which is statement of financial position. And we've got an income statement. And if I zip down here, we've got some additional information. And of course, if I flip over the page, you've already seen I've made some notes. What we're looking for is a cash flow statement. And just for operating activities too. So we're just looking for the operating activities. As at the 30th of June. 2016 using the direct method. Okay, so we're doing a cash flow statement. What I've got to try and identify is what is the cash flow through each of these accounts. Now, we only do an operating activity, so that's cool. So my operating activities, operating activities includes my income, my expenses, my current assets, and my current liabilities. Financing, is my uh, non-current liabilities and equity and my investing equals my non-current assets. So any movements through those. So what I'm looking at now is um, obviously accounts receivable is a current asset, inventory is a current asset, prepaid expenses is a current asset. My So that ticks off my current assets. Accounts payable and accrued expenses payable is my current liabilities. Um, and then I've got my income and my expenses, so my items down the bottom here. And I'm also given some additional information, and we'll just have a look at that now. Uh, here we go, so we've got it on board. So I've got operating expenses included depreciation, so operating gives me a clue, so it's an operating activity. So I'll be wanting to look at that item there as well. Land was sold during the year, land's a non-current asset, so that's investing. Cash dividends were for 220000 so cash dividends falls under equity, that's financing. Interest expense was 48000 was paid during the year, that's an operating activity, so I'm going to highlight that one. Uh, during the year, machinery with a cost of 664 was purchased for cash, machinery with a cost of 164 and a carrying amount of 144 was sold, so that's actually an investing activity as well. Let's have a look over the page, I've already actually ticked these off. My bank loans were 160,000, that falls under financing. My ordinary shares were issued for cash of 640, well shares are financing as well because it falls under equity. And accounts payable pertains to inventory. So okay, that's a piece of information that I need, but doesn't actually give me any dollar values. So let's continue on. Now what I want to try and do is I want to try and identify how much cash went through my accounts receivable. So what I'll have to do is reconstruct what goes through my accounts receivable. So let's have a look. My accounts receivable uh, started with 104,000, finished with 272,000. So my opening balance is 104. My closing is 272. And I'll just tick both those numbers as being done and I'll give it accounts receivable a tick as well. Now what increases my accounts receivable is my sales. So let's have a look. My sales is 3,560,000. So sales three five six zero. And I can now work out what my cash paid was. Alright, so I've got 104 plus 356A, 3664. Now, if I just deduct my 272, because my accounts have to balance, my cash pa received from customers is 3 million. Not 3,392,000. So 3,392. And that's collections. I'll just call it collect. And I'm going to highlight that because that is of interest for me when I build my cash flow statement. Next item I want to do is my inventory. So my inventory had an opening balance of zero and a 
closing balance of 216. Now what increases inventory is purchases, and we can't find purchases anywhere here. But what decreases inventory is my cost of goods sold. Let's tick off this. So my cost of goods sold is 18600 000. And this is cost of goods sold. Now if I add those two together, that's uh, that'll come into 2076. That must make this side 2076. So that must make my purchases 2,076,000. Now it's not cash flow, so I'm going to leave that for the moment and I'm going to move on to my next item because my inventory, as it said back here, pertains, my accounts payable pertains to inventory. So this piece of information here is going to tell me that I have to use my inventory and my accounts payable accounts to come up with what my cash flow. So let's go accounts payable. My accounts payable. Uh, opening balance was 160. Now because these are liabilities, I put my opening balance on the credit side. And my closing balance was 92,000. Now what increases my accounts payable is my purchases. So this purchases figure goes straight down to here. And I have 2076,000. And so this will come into, what's that, 2... Uh, brain's not working too well today, that's okay. 160 plus 2076 and that equals... Two, two, three, six. So this side must equal 2236 as well. And therefore my payments must equal, let's have a look, so 2236 less my 92 equals 2144. And that becomes an interest to me because that's going to go into my cash flow as well. So I can tick off my accounts payable as being done as well. Now I've got prepaid expenses here which is also a current asset that I have to look at and I've got some operating expenses down here and accrued expenses. So what I want to be able to do here is I want to make sure how much um, of my cash flow relates to these two. So let's do prepaid. And my prepaid had an opening balance of 24 and a closing balance of 16. So 24 is my opening and my close is 16. Now we're not going to assume anything else went through there. But what's gone into my operating expenses is $8,000. Now that'll you will become relevant when we do our next bit. So I'm going to tick off prepaid expenses and now I'm going to do my accrued expenses. So my accrued expenses I have an opening balance of zero so my opening's on the credit side and I've got a closing balance of 40 to put $40,000 into OPEX that I'll pay for in the next year. So this is into operating expenses, 40000 Okay, so that ticks off everything that's in my balance sheet now. Now, I've still got my operating expenses down here and it tells me that this number here includes depreciation of $132,000. So we need to take $132,000 out of there, which will make it $752,000. That's what will relate to cash flow because depreciation 
is non-cash. So my depreciation is non-cash, so I need to exclude that in my calculations, which this prepaid and accrued expenses will affect as well. Okay, so now operating expense. So my operating expense. There's no opening balance as an operating expense. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to obviously if I've credited here, I'll need to debit here. So prepaid is eight thousand. So that ticks off that. And I've got accrued expenses here. Of forty thousand. And obviously I've got seven fifty-two here of so uh, this goes to what we call a PL summary. So I'm closing my account, 752. So what we're looking to do is what's the cash movement through here? Well my balance will be 752. So that makes the difference, it's 4852704 is cash paid. And that becomes interesting to me because I'm going to put that into my cash flow as well. Now, is there anything else I need to include? Yes, because I haven't ticked off everything yet. Now, loss on the sale of machinery. Loss is a non-cash item. I have my interest expense here of 48000 So I'm interested in this. So will I be including that in my cash flow? Yeah, because it says interest expense was paid during the year. So the big thing for me is that it's paid. So I can say that that 48000 there is all 100% cash flow. So I'm going to highlight that one there. Uh, there's no interest payable in here. And then my tax expense. Tax expense of 260000 is interesting to me because we're obviously going to have to pay something around tax. Is there any payables or tax payables? No, there's not. So this becomes part of my cash flow as well. So now I'm at the point where I need to draw up my cash flow statement. Okay, let's have a look here. Cash flow statement. Let's flip over to a new page. Okay, cash flow statement. For uh, Cornell's Limited for year ending 30th of June 2016. And we're only doing operating activities. So my operating activity is the only thing I need to do. Now, let's have a look. The first thing in my operating activities I want to do is I want to put in my collections, cash collected from customers, of three million three hundred and ninety two thousand dollars. Three million three ninety two. So collections from customers. Three million three hundred ninety-two thousand dollars. Now, payments to my suppliers. My payments to my suppliers. Let's have a look here. Let's get my pages working. My payments to my suppliers was two million one hundred forty-four thousand dollars. Two million one forty-four. That's cool. Two one four four. Now I'm going to bracket that to indicate it's a cash outflow. The next one I, I want to calculate or want to put in is my um, cash paid for my operating expenses, so seven hundred and four thousand. Uh, so operating expenses. Seven oh four. And that's a bracketed figure as well because it's an outflow. 
Uh, the next one I'm going to look at is my uh, interest. So my interest expense of 48,000. I can slide this up. 48,000. Now that was a pay. So once again, it's a bracketed figure to indicate outflow. And then I've got a tax expense of 260,000 that I want to put in. And taxes are always paid, so that'll be once again an outflow. So now I just need to calculate my operating activities. 3392 less 2144 less 704 less 48 less 260 equals $236,000. And it's a positive figure, so therefore I've got a cash inflow. So I'm not going to write that. So that is then my cash flow statement. The marks on this one are simple. You get a mark for every tick. So questions, questions worth 11 marks. So you get one for the heading and two for each of these that you include. Now if you included, whoops, all right. If you included others, you'd obviously have a mark deducted. So and that's how we do our cash flow statement.